How's it going guys? We have a past level question for pharmacology, step one, internal medicine, 2CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, and mehl man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to Telegram group and channel down below. And I start the clip. 42 old woman, three month history of puffiness for arms and legs. She has type 2 diabetes, hypertension, rheumatoid arthritis, management, multiple medications. Which of the following is most likely responsible for this patient's presentation? So as it is prefaced with ultra pass level, okay, you got no basic side effects, but I got to check off this box. So if you think it's too easy, don't have to tell you. Okay, let's just hop to the answers here. Choice A, hydrochlorothiazide, I don't know if I can answer. So thiazides, you need to know, can cause galacteria. Very fucking weird, okay? And the mechanism is obscure. It's on offline NBME 20, okay? Patients on hydrochlorothiazide, uh, there's galacteria and they want you to know that it's adverse drug effect, okay? Very obscure. Uh, hydrochlorothiazide can also cause hypercalcemia in theory. It can pull calcium out of the urine. It's used for patients who have recurrent calcium urolithiasis. It can also cause gout, and it can cause insulin resistance and dyslipidemia. But for you, Simile, I want you to know uh, that it pulls calcium out of the urine, can cause hypercalcemia, and I want you to know galacteria. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, lisinopril, wrong fucking answer. So ACE inhibitors can cause dry cough. That's the highest yield thing you need to know. They can cause hyperkalemia, okay, because you're interfering with RAS. And of course, the elephant in the room is they can cause uh, exacerbations of an angioedema, okay, patients that have hereditary angioedema, they need to be avoided. It's very low yield, that latter uh, side effect, but uh, you still need to be aware of it for USMLE. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C. And by the way, just for those of you studying for 2CK, you need to know uh, lisinopril and ACE inhibitor or an ARB such as candesartan. Uh, they're given to patients who have uh, diabetes, who have uh, elevated creatinine or renin, blood pressure greater than 130 on 80 or any proanuria. And you also need to know that uh, they're high yield given to patients who have carotid stenosis, who just in general, but they'll be the answer for patients who are below the end arterectomy thresholds. You're going to get a triad of number one, an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. US me loves lisinopril. Number two, a statin. And number three, antiplatelet therapy. Aspirin is sufficient. As I already said, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, metformin, wrong fucking answer. So metformin is an obscure mechanism. It's used for type 2 diabetes. Uh, you just need to memorize, quote, decreases gluconeogenesis, increases glycolysis, okay? And it's a first-line agent for type 2 diabetes. You need to know what causes lactic acidosis, okay? So if you get a question where a patient's on metformin and bicarb is low, normal range 22 to 28, so let's say they say bicarb's 20, that implies there's lactic acidosis and you're going to discontinue the metformin. In addition, if a patient has high creatinine and is on metformin, you're going to discontinue it because renal insufficiency can increase the chance of getting lactic acidosis, okay, when you're on metformin. That can be confusing because metformin doesn't cause renal insufficiency. If you have high creatinine and you're on metformin, you're not discontinuing it because the metformin caused renal insufficiency. That's not the case. You're discontinuing it because, as I just fucking said, you can get a greater proclivity for lactic acidosis if you have renal insufficiency. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, my fetipine, correct answer. So dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers are going to dilate peripheral arterials used for hypertension. High yield adverse effect is peripheral edema slash fluid retention. Okay, it's just very easy, very pass level. Uh, but this is a one of the medications that's used for hypertension. Okay, it can also sometimes be used for pulmonary hypertension in addition. And this is exceedingly important uh, mostly for family medicine for TCK, but of course, those of you for studying for step one, it's it's a high yield adverse effect you need to know. This is in contrast to verapamil, non dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker, often used in patients for rate control who have atrial fibrillation. This causes constipation, okay? So this acts on nodal uh, tissue calcium channels. Uh, so verapamil can cause constipation, nephedipine causes peripheral edema, metformin causes lactic acidosis. Lisinopril causes dry cough, hyperkalemia, exacerbation of hereditary angioedema. Hydrochlorothiazide causes galacteria and hypercalcemia. Verapamil? Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.